Hello guys, it's Sir Mr. Cherries and welcome to another GUI tutorial which I'll be showing you how to play sounds and stop sounds. Well basically it's called playing sounds and stopping sounds. And this video was requested by Mando G, which he wanted to make a music playlist. <clears throat> which I couldn't make, but I can make the bit where you can play and stop music, which he thought it'd be really cool, so I I would do a tutorial for that. Right, you may you may have seen my video called "How to Make an Intro Using Sounds." Like, like I've made an intro using sounds. It was quite good. So then I thought I'd do a, uh, I'd do something like that, which he thought I could do that. Right, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Right now, I want I want it to get I want the GUI to play the music, and I want to be able to start the music whilst it was playing, even though it stopped. So we'll get a GUI, and then we're gonna get a local script for that. And then the thing is, we're gonna have to use a sound object. So first, we'll make our GUI. We're gonna make a music GUI, and we'll insert a text button. Let's call it music one. Or if you want to put in more music, you can just type music one, music two, music three, and all the way down. But you'll have to, you know, you may have to put in the frame if you want to make a music GUI. So you like, you can open and close it, like I showed you on my last tutorial on opening and closing. And then we'll put in a, a local scripts. I need to find local scripts because it's just a lot of things around. So let's edit that button. So make it look pretty. Make it 200 by 60. Make the font a bit bigger. Do play song. Then we'll change the text to white. So we're going to be changing the background of it. So don't you worry. So there we go. Point six. There we go. Just to move it down. I think that's it, really. Okay. Now we're going to insert a sound object. Uh, there we have it. So we got this. We got a sound object, and we're going to call it song. Because we'll be putting in a song. Now, um, if if you make the script and then you try to play it. Um, the sound is not gonna do anything because it needs a sound ID which is right here which is highlighted sound ID you're gonna need to put in a sound ID so how we're gonna do that well first we'll do HTTP colon uh, two slashes www.roblox.com slash set slash question mark ID then equals we just put in a couple of numbers but you don't do it randomly it's not it's just not gonna do anything so how we're gonna get the sound ID with the numbers we're gonna go into our start page uh, which is my profile page you go to develop because you have your models and audio everything there it used, it used to been on the catalog but Roblox has changed the features around so they put they decided to put it in develop mode because basically we just it's something to do with our places and building and scripting all of that developer exchange it's pretty stupid that bit <laughs> now you want to go into the library because this is where our, where all of these models decals audio and plugins are so we want to go into audio and then you can choose uh, the amount of various songs that you can find or sound effects or just quotes everything they are pretty amazing so we'll get 15 second dubstep. I'm, I'm not sure if he made this by himself. Right now, this ID up here upon this address bar, um, you don't get the whole thing because that's just that is just not gonna work. You, you don't get the whole thing. So what you want to get, you want to get these numbers right beside this equals sign, this equal symbol. So you highlight these numbers, so you just click down and then you just drag it along. Oh, you just clicked again. So you hold down this uh, left left click button and then you just drag it. 
until you reach the end of one or whatever number so then you're going to right click it and then you copy and then we'll go back into our uh, place so you click on a song and then you paste that in properties next is equal sign and you paste it so there you have it you have your song but first we need to script it so now I have to figure out how to do this again so we'll put that in just in case player.game.players.local player next we'll do that button script.parent song script.parent.parent.song so yeah these two parents so this is script.parent.parent .parent. And then you just say which one you want to get inside this um, model, whatever, this screen GUI. So we got song. In case you all are wondering how, how you put in too many parents in that, that is just, that is just to go up. So basically, basically you're, you're getting out of this bit. But it's like you want to you just like choose something. <laughs> Not sure how to describe it. And then we'll make a debounce called playing false so it's basically based off a bool value but if you want to use a bool value you can do that if you have it in uh, in that button you do script dot well you do button dot debounce whatever it is but if you have it as plain then you do plain so you could basically do that but I just do a built-in debounce because it's just much easier make it less lag a bit right um Oh, an itch on my arm, bloody hell! We'll make a function. We'll not. We, we're not going to make a built-in function because I think it won't work, unless it will. Play song. We're going to call our function, and we don't want anything in there. And now, next, we're going to do an if statement for the debounce. If playing is equal to false, then so that means the button's not pressed. Next, you're going to do stuff here. So by doing stuff, we want to play the song. So how we're we gonna do that? We have our song as well. The variable is song. So we do song colon play. It's easy. Or if you don't have a variable and your song is in this GUI like mine is, you do script dot parent dot parent dot song play. Pretty easy. But for now on, we're going to use our variable. Let's do play. Just saves us more time on scripting. And then the debounce, we're going to set to true. Because we because we press the button to play the song. And then we'll do this else if statement. If playing is equal to true then. Means the button has been pressed. But we want to make it false again. So you do the same thing, but instead you make it different. You don't put play, you put stop. So that basically it stops the sound. Or if you want to pause the sound and then and then continue playing it, you can put in pause. So it's basically a good idea. But now we'll just put in stop. Right. Uh, next we'll do playing false. So we have it. And then at the bottom of this function, we're going to end it by doing button dot mouse button one down colon connect in brackets play song there so we finish that and then we're going to play it so it should play the song yep so that basically works and then when you play it again even though you stopped it so when you play it again that just restarts it. Now, about uh, you guys are wondering um, about the pause bit, and why well, I, I did explain what it means, but I will demonstrate what what pause is. So basically, um, again, you play the song, but when you pause it, oh, that's weird. That just goes back. That's the pause is just the same as stop. I don't get it. 
Oh well, just don't worry about the pause, guys. I think there's something wrong with that. So if mm, have a full round with this. If you want to add something else, like if you want a message coming up, the song is playing. You can you can try to do something like that. But if you want if you uh, if you want me to do more tutorials on other GUIs, I can do that if you want. Now um, subscribe to my channel if if you like. Don't worry, mind. Um, you can uh, give this a like if this tutorial helped you and comment if you have any thoughts or if you have any requests what I could do. I'll maybe try and get over get over to that. And I may reply to your comments. Right, so thank you for all thank you for watching. Sorry about my stars and I'll see you later.